bow your heads with me for prayer? Dear Father, we are so grateful to be here together today. We're thankful for reasons to celebrate, for reasons to gather, and for reasons to stop and remember how far you have led us and how good you have been to us. I am personally grateful for every one of these graduates that you have blessed our campus with. And I'm truly sorry to see them go, but I'm excited to see them face their future calling. I pray that each one will leave today knowing how much they matter to us and especially how much they matter to you. I pray that you will give them constant reminders of your goodness throughout their lives and that you will both strengthen and protect them as they face life's inevitable challenges. I pray that they will remember us not only for the knowledge we passed on to them, but also for the faith that as we part ways, we will remember each other for our kindness and our compassion rather than our shortcomings. I pray that you will bless each graduate with an extra measure of wisdom and that they will measure their worth according to your grace and find meaning in their identity as your children. Lord, please send them out from this place as ambassadors of your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, graduates, faculty, and staff, you may be seated. And platform participants. A, a little predendum uh, before I give uh, the welcome. Uh, here at Walla Walla University, uh, mask wearing and social distancing is very important for the well-being of our community. Therefore, we invite you that as long as you are on the campus, that you will keep on your masks and you will observe social distances, except if you are in a family pod, uh, then you are allowed not social distancing, but we would invite you to have the mask. And secondly, if uh, someone from the platform comes uh, to the microphone like where I am, we can take off our masks and then stick it back on as soon as we are done doing our dissertation. And now for the welcome. Uh, members of the Board of Trustees, uh, members of the administration, members of the faculty, staff, and students of Walla Walla University, proud guests, family members, and friends, uh, mightily proud graduates of the classes of 2020 and 2021. Welcome to the 126th graduation celebration of Walla Walla University. A school founded by God himself. A community nurtured by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A school of higher learning filled with the Holy Ghost. And of course, a community of faith and discovery committed to excellence in thought, generosity in service, beauty in expression, and faith in God. Welcome to Walla Walla University's graduation commencement exercise for 2021. God bless you all. Welcome, family, friends, online guests, faculty, staff, and the 4 p.m. classes of 2020 and 2021. Here we are in person by the grace of God. We are alive and well, breathing and surrounded by the people we love. There are a few moments to just enjoy and revel in our accomplishments and in this time of remoteness, and living through our computer screens, being present and celebrating with one another face to face takes on a special meaning. As we have arrived at this milestone, 
we pause to reflect on the journey that has led us here. We rejoice in our triumphs and even find values in the trials as these challenges have not only made our victory so much sweeter, but has also instilled resiliency and molded our character for the better. You may have cultivated the spiritual fruit of patience, spending hours in the lab, hours in practice, or in dealing with technical issues and realizing you might have to repeat yourself once again because you forgot to click the unmute button. You may have also developed the spiritual fruit of self-control as you actively listened and engaged in class, fighting that strong urge to turn off the camera and just take a nap. In a year of isolation and sorrow, you sought and clung to moments of love, joy, and peace to get you through, and your march across this stage is a testament to your hard work, determination, and perseverance, and you should be very proud of yourselves. But let us not forget to acknowledge and thank those who have supported us along the way. Thank you parents, relatives, friends, for being our pillars of strength and motivating us to achieve beyond our own expectations. Thank you Walla Walla University for equipping us with invaluable tools and skills to embark on our dreams. And thank you for opening our eyes to new perspectives, seeing our potential and investing in us. Finally, thank you for creating an atmosphere of community and love, a place we will forever be proud to call home. So as a token of our gratitude to this institution that has given us so much, I am thrilled to announce that the class of 2021 is partnering with the university to add outdoor pickleball courts on campus, which will be ready for the students to use at the start of the coming school year. These courts will be a space where students can go to be refreshed physically, emotionally, and socially. And the space will also foster connection where a community can continue to thrive. Yesterday, at the end of our Sabbath service, we sang, in a little while, we're going home. I'm looking forward to that celebration in that new home with no tickets for entry, no masks, We'll be in robes like we are now, but not robes of black, but of white, rejoicing and hugging six feet closer. So class of 2021, until then, it is my prayer that we achieve excellence, one that is not measured by wealth or success, but one that assesses disparities, pursues justice, aiming to transform the places we will step into. It is my prayer that we uphold a life full of generosity so others can live a life full of opportunity. It is my prayer we radiate the beauty of God's, God's kingdom as we speak words of kindness, be the voice for the voiceless, and live life with overflowing praise to our creator in all that we do. It is my prayer that you walk by faith in God that uses every moment to learn from him and live like him a faith that does not waver based on circumstance, but is built on his never-ending goodness. Lastly, it is my prayer that we do all these things for the glory of God and fix our eyes on him until we hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. We would like to now recognize excellence among our faculty and staff on campus. We have a lengthy list of people that we are quite proud of, so I'd like to ask you to hold your applause until I complete the list. The Adventist Excellence in Theological Teaching Award, presented in recognition of excellence in teaching, both on and off campus, that reflects a commitment to Adventist theology. David Thomas, Professor of Practical Theology and Apologetics. C. Michael and Delana Lang Bell Outstanding Teaching Award in recognition of inspirational teaching and mentoring while integrating faith and learning. Deanna Ludwig Voss, Professor of Nursing. The Community Service Award, awarded to a faculty or staff member who exemplifies generosity and service to the community. Doug Taylor, Associate Director of Student Financial Services. Distinguished Faculty Lecturer, selected because of all-around excellence in teaching and scholarship, as well as involvement in the church and the community. Austin Archer, Professor of Psychology and Education. Austin Archer is also the recipient of the Diversity Inclusion Award, 
given to an employee who, who demonstrates merit of service in advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion as recognized by the Diversity and Inclusion Council. The Presidential Award for Excellence in Scholarship, presented for significant and meritorious in achievement in professional scholarship. Tom Ekins, Professor of Physics. The Presidential Award for Excellence in Teaching, presented for significant and meritorious achievement in teaching. Rob Holm, a po Associate Professor of Technology. Rising Staff Member of the Year Award, given in recognition of, of the energy, enthusiasm, knowledge, and innovation, in, uh, innovative ideas a new employee brings to the workplace. Sam Cummings, Help Desk Manager. Staff Member of the Year Award, in recognition of the hour, an hourly and a salaried employee who exemplifies outstanding dedication, competence, uh, and performance, as well as excellent customer service, Doreen Hackett, Campus Housing and Property Coordinator, and Carolyn Denny, Registrar. The Stephen and Market Tan Engineering and Computer Service Excellence in Teaching Award, in recognition of teaching excellence in engineering and computer science, James Foster, Assistant Professor of Computer Science. The Walla Walla University Excellence in Advising Award, granted for outstanding student advising on the basis of student evaluations. Kyle Craig, Professor of Chemistry, and Bryce Cole, Professor of Engineers. Please join me in acknowledging their excellent work here on campus. Allow me to add my welcome to all of you and my congratulations to the persistent and re resilient Walla Walla University classes of 2020 and 2021. I am moved by your presence here on Centennial Green this afternoon. Our seniors have selected as their commencement speaker today, Benjamin Lundquist, one of the leading voices for young adult ministry in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He currently serves as the Young Adults Ministry Director, Young Adult Ministries Director for the Oregon Conference. And in addition to that, he leads innovative projects for the North Pacific Union and North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He mentors leaders internationally and is passionate about inspiring and equipping people, especially university students, to become growing followers of Jesus and effective leaders for his cause. Benjamin frequently speaks on faith and leadership and has worked with almost all of our Adventist colleges and universities in North America, as well as with such organizations as the Barner Group, Fuller Youth Institute, the Salvation Army, Samaritan's Feet, Catalyst Conference, and Ironman events. He hosts the Rise and Lead podcast downloaded in 100 countries, providing world-class content and conversation to help listeners grow to their next level and expand their impact. Benjamin completed his undergraduate degree from Southern Adventist University. During that time, he took a year out of college to serve as a student missionary on the island of Ponape. His graduate degree is from Andrews University. Each, su each summer, Benjamin and his family moved to a place called Big Lake Youth Camp for a few weeks. There, Benjamin trains and mentors a new generation of young adult leaders. That summer ministry has had an outsized impact on Walla Walla University. Many of our student leaders over the past six years have been activated in leadership through Benjamin's coaching and mentoring. While in college, Benjamin met his wife, Kim, on the gymnastics team. They have two children, Remy, 10, and Koa, 11. Benjamin loves being a father and ends most of his days on the trampoline wrestling with his kids. Please join me, if you would, in welcoming Benjamin Lundquist. Good afternoon, it's an honor to be with you. Um, I'd like to recognize our 2020 and 2021 graduates by asking them to stand. Uh, 
We are so proud of you, and we just want to honor you again for making it to graduation today. <laughs> there has been um, much blood, sweat, and tears to get to this day. And we honor you, and we celebrate you, and we also thank the tremendous staff and faculty at Walla Walla University for making this day possible. So again, thank you so much, and you may be seated. Dr. McVeigh, faculty and staff at Walla Walla University, parents and family members, it is an incredible honor honored to be with you this afternoon to share a few words, and I want to thank Dr. McVeigh for giving me three hours to share. <laughs> Just kidding. To the uh, class of, classes of 2020 and 2021, how many of you have cried, fought through stress, disappointment, anxiety, and even depression to make it through this day? This is a significant accomplishment, and I want to let you know, and I think you know this already, but you have made it, amen? You are here, and we could not be more proud of you. I think I speak on behalf of everyone here, uh, those watching online and here in person, when I say that we believe in you, and we are proud of you, and we celebrate with you today. You have got through a year of quarantine, social distancing, Zoom classes, hybrid classes, some in-person classes, nasal swabs, <laughs> and more food takeout and to-go orders than you can probably count or ever imagined that you would eat or order. This has been a very unique time. And a graduation day is worth celebrating under normal circumstances, but you have fought through very challenging circumstances. And this day is even more uh, important for you and for the families that love you because you have made it today. This moment means a lot. And I want to encourage you, don't rush this moment. Look around at your classmates sitting next to you. Um, take this moment in. You have journeyed together. You have fought forward. You have overcome adversity. And you are stronger today than you were a year ago. There were moments when you think back where you thought the circumstances of life were breaking you. But by the strength of God, he was building you and you are stronger today than you were in the past. And God is preparing you through what you have been through in the last year for the purpose that he will lay out for you and your life. You are stronger than you realize, and we want to recognize that today. When I think about my college graduation, when I sat in chairs similar to yours, if I am fully honest, I remember absolutely nothing from what the speaker said. I don't remember who the speaker was. I don't remember what he said or she said. And so I want to make a request. Take your phones out and take pictures of me while I am speaking. <laughs> Thank you, Frosty. And my hope is that if you take a few photos, that maybe someday when you are bored uh, and you're scrolling through that camera roll, you'll see a photo and you'll remember the three life lessons that will change your life that I'm going to share in just a few moments. So I will not be offended if you take a few photos here and there. I never imagined being invited to speak for a commencement service. And I can't express what a great honor this is for me, class of 2020 and class of 2021. When I think back over my academic journey, it was a bit rocky and it was a bit challenging. Even going back to elementary school, I was not the kid who was brilliant at math and reading. And I can remember every afternoon having to leave my classroom to go to tutoring sessions to try to get caught up academically to my classmates. 
and when my classmates would ask me, hey, Benjamin, where are you going? I lied and told them I was going to advanced math and reading classes. <laughs> I even changed my name in elementary school to Benjamin Lundquist III, even though I was only the first, as a way to build my confidence and make myself feel a little bit better about who I was. I remember my dad telling me as we moved around the East Coast, we're moving to, moving to Florida and you're gonna be going to a new school and it's rather small. And I asked my dad, I said, how small is small? And he said, well, you are going to be the only eighth grader in your class, that small. When I graduated from eighth grade, I received every single award that year. <laughs> it was a highlight for me. And I remember as that little graduation service was done, a fourth grader was crying just outside of our venue. And that was one of the first moments that I realized how big of an impact one life could make on another. We don't just live a random life. We live a life with a purpose. And one life is meant by God's design to impact the life of another. And it is with great anticipation that I, I will watch the classes of 2020 and 2021 to see what you do, to see where you go, to see how high you climb, and to see all that you will accomplish for God's honor and God's glory. I remember missing my state championship basketball game in high school because my GPA was too low. I remember starting my freshman year at Union College and failing my freshman English class and having to have that challenging conversation with my father. I also know the struggle of not knowing what you're called to do, but laying awake at night because there's something inside your spirit that says you wanna make an impact and you wanna make a difference, but you may not have clarity on what that is. And when I look back at my collegiate journey, I had eight different declared majors in my undergrad and I attended four different universities. Somebody said, that must have been a fun journey. It was a rather expensive journey. But I wanna tell you this morning, and I think you know this from the last 15 months, and I hope this sinks in, and I hope you carry this truth with you as you go throughout life, that your current situation, hear me on this, that your current situation is not your final destination. That you have more chapters that will be written in your life. That pages will turn. That with God's grace and God's might and God's power, your story is not over yet. And there may be somebody on my left side who needed to hear that message this morning that your story is not over yet. That God can write new chapters. And if I'm honest, there's going to be times in your journey where you come up against tremendous struggle and you will have a hard time getting back up when you fall. Remind yourself that your story is not over yet, that God is not finished with you. Over the last 15 months, we have experienced a pandemic, intense racial injustice, and major political tension. When I think about a word that describes what has happened in our world, the word that comes to my mind is reset. The entire world has reset. The way we live, the way we lead, the way we love, things are different. And I think our goal as leaders and co-leaders, because that's how I view you, as co-leaders, our responsibility and opportunity is not to go back to what was. The goal is not to get back to normal. The goal is to build a better normal, to build a better world, to use the gifts and the abilities that God has, has given you to craft and create something that has never been. When you think about this year and make it to this place, as you move forward, always see problems as possibilities. See obstacles as opportunities and envision the possibility that we have to create something better together. 
when I thought about what I could share with you that, that I hope would add some value to your life, not just for today, but for years and years to come. I wanna share with you three life lessons or pieces of advice. If you wanna take notes and pull your phone out, I will not be offended whether you are a family member, a friend, or you're one of our incredible graduates. But as I thought about what I wish somebody would have said to me, this is what I wanna share with you. And I want you to, to view these pieces of advice as your foundation. And when you have a foundation in life, it means that no matter what rocks you, no matter what challenges you come up against, you can stand strong because your foundation is secure. And the Word of God speaks about having a rock-solid foundation. Amen? Life will beat you up. Life is going to be challenging. And it's also incredibly beautiful. But your foundation matters. So let me share with you a few foundation pieces of advice as you launch your life and leadership journey forward. Number one, know who you are and know what you want in your life. When I think about a moment in scripture that I would have loved to have been present at, it would have been the baptism of Jesus. And as Jesus came up out of the water, the scripture says that a voice was heard from heaven. As the father was speaking to the son, and the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Don't let the world uh, shift your focus on where your identity comes from. Who I am, who you are, it comes from who God says we are. Your identity is 100% rooted and received from your heavenly father. And you can say amen to that. And what that means is what God thinks about you is unchangeable. That you don't have to worry about earning your value and worth or earning your identity or losing your identity on your worst days because your identity is not lost and it's not earned. It is received every day. And it means that you can walk in confidence that no matter what kind of day you are having, hear me on this, you are a child of God always. And as a child of God, royalty flows through your veins. And you have incredible worth and you have incredible value. So when you operate in life and you begin to lead and create change, uh, operate from the worth and value that you already have. Wake up every day with your head held high and your shoulders back because you are valuable and you are worthy and you don't need a TikTok account, an Instagram account, so many likes or a, a, a Twitter feed or a text message to tell you who you are and how valuable you are. God has already determined that for you. Your identity is going to be tested. Go back to who God says you are and claim the worth and value that he has given you. A friend of mine uh, named Tammy Irwin, I interviewed her for my podcast a number of months ago and Tammy Irwin is the CEO of Verizon. And I asked Tammy, I said, Tammy, what advice would you give to uh, young leaders who are launching their life and their career and she said without hesitation, I, I would tell young leaders, you need to decide what you want. Nobody needs to decide what is best for you. You need to decide that for yourself by taking full ownership of your life and your journey. I just want to challenge you as you move forward. You need to have a vision for your life. You need to have at least an idea of what you want out of life who you want to become, and what you want to accomplish. You need class of 2020 and 2021. This may sound direct, but I wish somebody had said this to me. You need to be in the driver's seat of your life. Because if you're not driving your life, life will drive you. And you may end up in a place that you didn't expect or you didn't want to be. Or you may not have the opportunity to reach your fullest potential. So take ownership of your life and be in the driver's seat 
of your life. You don't have to have it all figured out. And I think I speak on behalf of all the uh, distinguished faculty that we have on this platform. None of us have it figured out. Every day we are surrendering our life and our future to God. We are taking it one day at a time. But have a vision for your life. Lesson number two, live your life with purpose. When I think about purpose, I think about when Jesus called his disciples and Jesus said, and there was so much to unpack in this, this small little invitation. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I want to tell you class of 2020 and 2021, your first and supreme calling is to follow Jesus with your life. That's your supreme calling. And your second calling is to do something with the life that God has given you. Something significant, something big, something that will give God honor and glory. What I wish somebody would have told me about purpose and calling when I was younger is, is this. And I can relate because I had a number of different majors trying to figure things out. Your calling or your purpose, your calling cannot be contained in a career. Your calling is so much bigger than a career. A career can be part of your calling, but hear me uh, this afternoon, your, your career cannot contain your calling. A career is what you do to make a living, and it's part of your calling ideally. But your calling is what you do with your life and you may have a job where you have a time card and you may check in at nine and check out at five, but you don't ever clock out of your calling. Somebody say amen. What I am called to do, I'm going to do that 24-7 for the rest of my life. You don't ever check out of your calling. So make sure that you are seeking to live your life with purpose. And somebody told me, hey, Benjamin, you've got to find your calling, your purpose. When I look back over my life, it didn't work that way for me. The way it played out is that I made a commitment that I would seek God with my life and that I would serve people with the gifts that he had given me and what ended up happening is my calling found me. Every day, I want to invite you, seek God with your life and use the gifts and the abilities that he has given you to add value to the people around you. Be the graduating class of 2020 and 2021 who adds significant value to families, churches, communities, and to our world. But if you will commit to seeking God and to adding value and serving your world, your calling will find you. But let me give you a few questions, very practical. A couple questions that, that have helped me along the way in identifying my calling and my purpose. What breaks your heart the most? Because often what breaks your heart the most is what God is calling you into to create the greatest change. So what breaks your heart? What would you do for free? Because you love doing that thing so much. And can you remember the last time that a day flew by and you lost track of time because you were so passionate about what you were doing during that day. Live your life with purpose. Third and final piece of advice is this. Be faithful and fruitful to your current assignment. You may have an overarching purpose for your life that is revealed over time, but that purpose is made up of many, many life assignments. And I used to ask God every day, God, what am I here for? What, what do you want me to do? What is my purpose? And I believe God is answering that question for me over time, but a better question I believe is this. God, what is the assignment that you have put in front of me? And what does it mean to be faithful and fruitful to your current assignment. When you look at the life of Joseph, in the middle of all of Joseph's assignments, Joseph chose to be faithful and fruitful. 
He chose to, to not be average with his assignments, but to be excellent with what he did. And one thing I've learned along the way is this, that when you crush your current assignment, it will set up your next assignment. So if you're going to give your current assignment average, your great assignment may not come in the way that it could come had you put in everything you had into that assignment. So whatever is in front of you, do it well. Go above and beyond. Show up early. Put in 110%. Never settle for average. And God will reward your faithfulness and your fruitfulness with your life. I have had jobs that were not glamorous. Trust, trust me. I once had a job for an entire summer and I repaired sewer lines. Let me tell you, actually, I will not tell you any stories from that experience. It may make your stomach churn. But even an assignment that may have not been the most glorious, I did it well. And I focused on being faithful and fruitful to that current assignment. When you do that, it will set up your next assignment. Um, an incredible uh, quote that I want to share with you as we finish talking about this third piece of advice, and it is shared by Dr. Martin Luther King, thinking about being faithful and fruitful to your assignment. And Dr. King says this, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should, he should sweep the streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep the street so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth pause and say, here lives a great sweeper who did his job well. So in review, know who you are, class of 2020 and 2021. Decide what you want and be in the driver's seat of your life. Live your life with purpose by seeking God and serving and, serving and giving value to others. And make sure that whatever assignment is in front of you, that you are faithful and fruitful to that assignment, knowing that crushing the now will set up your next. This is a emotional moment for me. Uh, my daughter turned 10 years old on, on Thursday. And as I watched graduates walk across the stage, I could only imagine that in the, in the blink of an eye, parents, does it happen in the blink of an eye? In the blink of an eye, my daughter will be graduating from university. Since she was four years old, I have tried to instill in her that she has incredible worth and value. And Dr. McVeigh and I were talking about this uh, last evening over dinner. I still have worship with my kids every night that I can. And I lay on the side of my daughter's bed and we talk about life. And I gave her a mantra to speak over her life since the time she was four years old. And she has been saying this almost every single night. And her mantra is this. I am beautiful, God has a plan for me, and I will do great things with my life. I want her to know that her beauty comes from God, not from anybody else, that her worth and value comes from God. And we were having one of our evening routines, and as I begin to say that mantra over her, she told me, Dad, stop and I thought have I offended her have I said the wrong thing we always say this why is she telling me to stop she said dad stop and she was about six years old she took her little uh, little lady hands and she smashed my cheeks together and she said she, she was so serious she said dad you are beautiful <laughs> God has a plan for you. 
and you will do great things with your life. And I had a bug in my eye, and a tear started coming down. <laughs> but I just had to receive that little word that she spoke into me. Class of 2020 and 2021, this is a greater honor than I could ever express to share a few words. And I want to leave you with this, similar to what I have shared with my daughter. Class of 2020 and 2021, you are incredibly valuable. God has a plan for your life, and you will do great things. Thank you very much. I'll be recognizing each of the classes separately. Will the class of 2021 please stand? <laughs> President McVeigh, esteemed faculty, staff, students, family members, honored guests, and those watching remotely, it gives me great pleasure 125 years after the first Walla Walla University commencement to present the graduating class of 2021. Let's give them a hand. You may be seated. According to our alumni office, in this class are five fifth generation Walla Walla University students. By my calculations, that means that their great, great grandparents must have been part of one of the earliest classes that we had here at Walla Walla University. I love that kind of loyalty, don't you? And then to move on further, when we go to fourth generation, there are 69 in this class that are fourth generation Walla Walla University students. Our current records show that we have 332 baccalaureate graduates to be, which is five more than last year. 267, or about 80% of you, began here as freshmen in this class. Class of 2021 is the second class affected by COVID-19. And in spite of the challenges of online and hybrid classes, you are a high achieving class. At this time, 72% or excuse me, 72 of you qualify as cum laude graduates, 40 as magna cum laude, and 44 as summa cum laude. In addition to these achievements, there are three seniors who are graduating today with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Madison Boskind, Sandy Jensen, and Carly Smedley. Eight seniors are completing double majors, and seven seniors are completing dual bachelor degrees. This weekend, Walla Walla University is granting a total of 53 master's degrees, plus 38 more on our Montana campuses, 337 bachelor's degrees, and, uh, and 25 associate degrees. That's a lot of new alumni leaving this fine institution. We have a number of dedicated scholars in this distinguished cl senior class, having earned an impressive number of college credits. The senior graduating with the highest number of credits will have earned a grand total of 272 college credits here at Walla Walla University. All combined, that adds up to a lot of student credit hours. We thank you for earning your degree here at Walla Walla University. To finance their education, these students have received financial help from parents, other family members, 
and then grants and scholarships from Walla Walla University, friends of the university, and from government sources. You see, this is rarely an individual effort. It is truly a team effort that brings these individuals to this point today. The class of 2021 covers a broad range in age. According to our records, our youngest bachelor's degree graduates are 20 years old, and our oldest, 49. The nursing program has the largest number of majors represented in this class with 64 seniors. Nursing is followed by the School of Business with 52, the School of Engineering with 50, Technology with 34, Health and Physical Education with 31, School of Education and Psychology with 30, Communication and Languages with 24, Biology with 16, Social Work and Sociology with 15, History and Philosophy with 12, the School of Theology with 11, Chemistry and Computer Science each with 8, Art with 7, English and Math with 4 each, Physics with 3, and Music with 2. 124 of our graduating seniors come from right here in Washington State, 61 from California, 58 from Oregon, and 16 from Idaho. 25 other states are represented from as far away as Florida, New Hampshire, and Alaska. We also have international representation in this class, including Australia, Canada, China, the Czech Republic, Egypt, Guatemala, India, Indonesia, Jamaica, Kenya, the Marshall Islands, Mexico, Peru, the Republic of Serbia, Sweden, Switzerland, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom. Some in the class of 2021 have already focused on service to the world beyond the Walla Walla Valley. Within this group are 43 who have served as student missionaries and task force workers. We are proud to call all of them alumni and know they will continue to bless others as they go forth to the world. President McVeigh, I am pleased to present the Walla Walla University Class of 2021, and we will now begin with the conferring of degrees. The first row of graduates may prepare. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with a major in art, Miranda Rose Oss, magna cum laude, Christian Service Volunteer. <laughs> Nicole Ray Bennett Gomez, also a major in Business Administration, magna cum laude. Shelley B. Ant Henderson, also a major in history, cum laude. Major in English, Mackenzie Olivia Smith Davidson, cum laude, Honors General Studies Program. Major in French. Jason Alexander Schaefer and Trina, also earning a BA uh, B of Education, Bachelor of Education degree, major in secondary education, and a Christian service volunteer. Victoria Crystal Smith Alvarez, 
magna cum laude. Major in music, Yanina Komenko. Major in strategic communication, Mary Grace Bagden, summa cum laude. Michael W. Jimenez, cum laude. Major in Theology, Jared Paul Frost. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, Jacob P. Craig. Yeah, Jacob! Pierce Allen Croshall, Christian Service Volunteer. Go, Andrew Michael Rood, summa cum laude. Yeah. Destiny A. Stopson, magna cum laude. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Liberal Studies, Heidi Michelle Roberts. <laughs> Kaylee Marissa Wolfkill. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, major in Aviation Technology, Kyle Nathaniel Hoover. Major in biology, Mason Fisher, cum laude. Cody L. Fullerton, cum laude. Major in Business Administration, Cody Chris Keller. <laughs> Ethan James Sunith, cum laude. <laughs> Emma, Emma L. Tucker Rood, also earning an AS degree in pre-physical therapy and summa cum laude. Major in computer science, Caleb A. Herbal, cum laude, honors general studies program. Major in Elementary Education, Christy Lynn Rose, magna cum laude, Christian Service Volunteer. Major in Film, TV, and Media, Jordan Scott Barnett. Major in Forensic Psychology, Cole E. Tomcho. Major in graphic design. Carly Danielle Smedley, also earning a BA degree, major in strategic communication, summa cum laude. Major in health science. Uh, 
in absentia. Major in mathematics, John Anthony Cotter. Major in product design, Eric A. Andrade. Kevin Monk, summa cum laude. Vincent Leland Weibel. Michael Javante Winter. Major in psychology, Kristen Noel Byerly. Cum laude, Honors General Studies Program, Christian Service Volunteer. Where was he? Oh, okay. Major in health science, Tim Keju. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Edson Samuel Taylor Carbajal, Honors General Studies Program. <laughs> Noah R. Griffith. <laughs> Matthew E. Harter. Nicholas Y. Iwakoshi. Cameron Walker Kinsey. Khalil X. Llewellyn. Kyle Austin Escara Malagat, cum laude. Travis Anthony Stanger. Aaron A. Sturtevant, cum laude. Jordan Maylin Watkins, summa cum laude. Gan candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work, Melanie Bellin Gray, magna cum laude. Alyssa Catherine Riley Harder. <laughs> Anita Rose Spurl. In absentia. Candidates for the degree of Associate of Science, Pre-Dental Hygiene, Emily Beesman. And now we turn to the class of 2020, and I would like to just say a few words about them before they uh, receive their recognition individually. This graduating class of 2020 is special. They were summarily sent away from campus on March 12, and not allowed to come back for any kind of commencement. 
and about 25% of the class of 327 have found their way back for these commencement exercises this year. And they are to be congratulated for doing that. We are glad to give them a proper send-off. A high-achieving class, 67 uh, qualified as cum laude graduates, 49 for magna cum laude, and 27 as summa cum laude. They, like others, have worked all kinds of angles in order to finance their education with help from the university, from family and friends, from scholarships, and friends of the university and from government, so government sources. They, too, cover a broad range in age from 20 to 60. Nursing was once again the largest major, represented with 69 seniors, followed by School of Engineering with 50, School of Business with 46, Health and Physical Education with 31, School of Education and Psychology with 29, Technology with 20, Biology with 17, Communication and Languages with 16, Theology with 13, Social Work and Sociology with 10, Computer Science with 8, History and Philosophy with 7, English and Math with 6 each, art, chemistry, and music, each with five, and physics with two. 120 of the class came from right here in Washington State, 73 from Oregon, 59 from California, and seven from Idaho. 21 other states were represented from as far away as Hawaii, Georgia, and Maine. We also have international representation in this senior class, including American Samoa, the Bahamas, Bolivia, Brazil, Canada, Iceland, India, the Republic of Korea, St. Lucia, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. As has been the case with other classes, many of them have already served the world in different places as Christian service volunteers, as task force workers, as student missionaries, and in various careers in this last year. President McVeigh, I'm pleased that many from the class of 2020 have been able to re uh, return. And so we will recognize a group of them now this afternoon. Senior class officers for the class of 2020, the executive vice president, Andre Jose, Jose Josue uh, Gonzalez, with a major in psychology, degree of Bachelor of Science. Sabrina Nicole Mates, Public Relations Vice President, degree of Bachelor of Arts, major in psychology, magna cum laude. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, Caleb Stephen King, Christian Service Volunteer. Joel Timothy Wagnus, Christian Service Volunteer. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science with a major in Bioengineering Science, Elliot Ronald Kloss, Magna Cum Laude, Honors General Studies Program. Major in Film, TV, and Media, Colton Jared Stopson. Major in Industrial Design, Caleb E. Brown. And Cody James Haggett. And with a major in math Mathematics, Mufaro Paja Kawamba. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Jerry Harris Eldridge Markeelan. <laughs> 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 
Kyle Arthur Lambert, Christian Service Volunteer. Jacob Dean Pretty, also earning a BS degree major in computer science, magna cum laude. Augusto Roca, summa cum laude, in absentia. David Alejandro Shepard. Caroline Gail Theus, magna cum laude. <laughs> Candidate for the degree of Associate of Science in Liberal Studies, Sharon Melinda Reeves. And a Jonathan Stacy. And that concludes the conferring of degrees for the year 2020 and 2021. Let's give all of the graduates a big round of applause. Congratulations, graduates. You have crossed the finish line. Alumni of Walla Walla University, we thank you for helping to build this place and for the legacy you left behind. Parents of graduates, we thank you for sharing your student with us and for trusting us with their college education. Graduates, your diligent work is completed and you have earned your degree. You are now a Walla Walla University success story. You joined the ranks of more than 50,000 Walla Walla University alumni. It is my honor and privilege to officially welcome you as alumni. The relationship, we, the relationship we begin today, we hope it will be a durable one for you. The gift you will receive as you march out of this event is a gift from the Alumni Association. Know that we will think of you and we will pray for you and that you will be missed. When you reach a milestone, we'd like to know, we ask that you stay connected. We also ask that you provide us a parting gift. Represent us well. Be a strong advocate for Walla Walla University, be godly alumni, and be our greatest champion. We'll stay in touch with you with news about fellow alumni and beloved faculty and invitations to alumni events. Wherever you go, take Walla Walla University's Hello Walk spirit with you. Smile, say hello, respect others, and keep your promises. You will find places that desperately need your integrity, your kindness, and of course, your knowledge. When you share that, you honor what, what you honor Walla Walla University's core values and traditions. We sincerely wish you God's grandest blessings. To our newest alumni, the classes of 2020 and 2021, welcome to Walla Walla University's alumni family. Congratulations. As you will have intuited, it has taken an army of staff faculty, and student employees to prepare our unusual multiple commencement services conducted over this weekend. To my knowledge, uh, this is as open a higher education commencement as has occurred in the state of Washington during this season. Many of the heroes and heroines who have helped this happen are in our midst today. Would you please join me in thanking them for facilitating this opportunity to be together? In order to make this commencement happen, we have made some important commitments. And it's up to you to help us keep those commitments. I ask you to do the following as we conclude this event. First, please keep your masks on while you are on campus, while you are in this event and on campus. Secondly, please practice distancing. And thirdly, 
Avoid congregating with those outside your family group. Thank you all for being here. Congratulations and God's blessing to you all. And now for our benediction. Following the benediction, I invite the audience to remain seated quietly for the traditional ringing of the university bell and recessional. Ushers will dismiss the audience after the recessional. And now, would the classes of 2020 and 2021, along with faculty and staff, stand for the benediction? Let's pray for our graduates now. On this graduation day, may God's blessing rest on you. May God's love light up your life. May your days be filled with adventures and discoveries and joy. And may you give your best to the people God places in your life. Amen.